Hi folks, we're going to be looking at chapters 12 and 13 of Brave New World. Um, so let's jump right in with chapter 12. We are in the world state um, in London with John and we're starting to see how John perceives this world that his mother had only ever told him about when he was growing up. So at the end of chapter 12, he had gone on a date to the Feelies in a cabaret with Lenina. And Lenina expected John to make a move um, at the end of the date, and he didn't. So there's some tension building between these characters that we're going to be exploring some more in chapter 12. So we begin chapter 12 with some very specific conflict. And that is this. John, the savage, is being summoned by Bernard. Bernard is banging down his, banging on his door. But John has locked himself in his room. And he will not exit his room right now. And um, John is starting to feel the effects of being treated like a sideshow um, sideshow exhibit. And, um, he's starting to get tired. Um, Bernard is really taking advantage of all of this newfound popularity that he's experiencing because of his association with, uh, with John. And so he keeps inviting people over to meet John and isn't asking for John's permission or consent to do so. Um, and John is getting tired. Um, and we see that um, that John is getting really stressed out in this situation. Um, and Bernard ends up being put in this situation where he has to let everybody down and let them know that the savage will not be meeting with them tonight. Um, and we see this have an impact on Bernard. These men were furious at him um, because they felt like he had tricked them into coming to visit um, when, when John doesn't appear. They felt like Bernard knew that this wasn't going to happen, and Bernard's only trying to get ahead socially himself. Um, so people are starting to see through Bernard's ploys for popularity that he's grasping onto with, with talents um, to make sure that Bernard is still kind of in the eye of the public. Um, but Lenina is there, and she is sitting off in the corner, all alone, melancholy, cut off from these other people, um, because she had kind of built up in herself that this was going to be a night that she was going to reveal to John that she likes him more than anybody I've ever known. Um, so she's ready to confess feelings for John, and she's very anxious about that. Um, she starts thinking back to their previous date after the feelings and why he didn't make a move. And to her, this doesn't make any sense. Um, so, um, when Bernard makes that announcement that John's not coming, Lenina automatically assumes that it's because John doesn't like her. Um, and she starts thinking through other people's like perspectives and thinking about what other people would say about her um, in this situation. And so Bernard has his his bubble burst and people keep thinking about that. Um, like Fanny brings up that rumor that Bernard was dosed with alcohol in development. Um, and so Bernard has this moment where he realizes all of these, all this popularity 
is really fragile just as he didn't have it before and how suddenly he got it it could disappear just as quickly um so we want to look at the kind of language that's used there um that he's distraught abject and agitated how he's stammering incoherent apologies um and so um this arch community songster of Canterbury, which sounds like a religious role is there. He's another pretty important person in the world state, and he's just been let down because John won't come out. Um, so as John is upstairs by himself, um, he's reading Romeo and Juliet. Um, so we get the sense that John is feeling the sense of unrequited love or romance. Um, he's just tired of being around other people, but we see him reading, turning to Shakespeare once more. So if we think about the story in Romeo and Juliet, um, we, we can again, draw some parallels between the themes in that book and the feelings that John is experiencing himself. Um, so John starts quoting um, Romeo and Juliet about like this quote from, from Juliet, or Romeo and Juliet, and um, And we see other people trying to like pull Lenina into some different directions, but she's feeling out of sorts because of what she was considering telling to um, telling um, John. So um, As we kind of, as that night wraps up and we go into the next day, we find out that um, John is feeling unhappy and, um, and Bernard is feeling unhappy. So these two um, outcasts in their respective worlds reached a sense of popularity and now they're feeling um, really dejected once more. So we'll want to look at what happens, especially once Hemholtz Watson comes back into play um, as this experience, excuse me, continues. Um, something that Hemholtz starts doing is he, we find out that he's been making some rhymes, making a poem. Um, and he says that this poem is pure madness, but it's not something he could, like, it's something that he wants to, um, wants to experiment with. And um, this poem kind of has set some targets on him. Um, people are a little concerned. And so he recites this poem, yesterday's committee sticks but a broken drum, midnight in the city, flutes in a vacuum, shut lips, sleeping faces, every stopped machine, the dumb and littered places where the crowds have been. All silences rejoice, weep loudly or low, speak but with the voice of whom I do not know. Absence say of Susan's, Abscene of Aguirre's arms and respective bosoms, lips and ah, posteriors, slowly from a presence whose, and I ask of what, so absurd an essence that something which is not, let nevertheless should populate empty night more solidly than that with which we copulate. Why should it seem so squalidly? Um, and it's not necessarily propaganda if you actually look at that poem, um, which is what gets him reported because um, he calls it just madness, but he's trying to write about a feel, the feeling that he's had. And so this moves beyond propaganda, right? This is getting back to poetry. Um, and that causes some 
concern for his superiors. Um, and so we start to see that as John has entered in to this world. Um, he's silently a catalyst for change within this world. Lenina is all flustered and feeling feelings she hasn't actually felt before. She's not feeling the same feelings for John that she thought she felt for Henry Foster. She genuinely cares about John. Um, we see Bernard kind of reaching these peaks and valleys of popularity. Um, Bernard's 15 minutes of fame seem to be fading as John refuses to participate. And Hemholtz Watson is impacted in a way that has him talking about his feelings. Um, and Hemholtz keeps writing more poetry um, that he calls the... Um, rhymes of solitude. So Hamholtz and John start connecting to one another because John's been reading Shakespeare. John's been reading poetry his whole, like ever since he was 12. And Bernard um, doesn't really understand where the poetry is coming from or what these men are trying to express to one another in the verse that they are creating. Um, John even reads Romeo and Juliet aloud to, um, to Hemholtz Watson. And Hemholtz is moved by, by these moments, um, mostly to laughter because he's, John reads him Romeo and Juliet. He sees this, um, obscenity as he views it of Juliet um, having to marry somebody that she doesn't want to um, and not having some choice in it. Um, and Hemholtz is missing some of the point just because culturally um, he hasn't been conditioned to think about the world in this way. And um, he, he nonetheless is still rather moved by this, this reading that John does. As we shift into chapter 13, um, we are, we once again see Henry Foster coming up to Lenina. Um, and Henry Foster is wanting to go on a date with her again, um, but Lenina is not interested um, because her thoughts are cons entirely consumed with John. Um, and so she has a further exchange with Fanny about this. Um, we start to see really the impact that this society has had um, and how childish this world has created its people to be. Um, and even, even as these... Um, even as John, or even as Lenina is thinking through um, these different things that she's experiencing, she's still taking Soma, but she's starting to question more about the world that she herself has grown up in. Um, and we even get to a place where um, John is. Um, John and Lenina have this interaction um, where we see, again, some tension and even violence that John starts enacting towards Lenina. Um, she wants to be kissed, but John um, grabs her by the wrists and... Um, and kind of throw, tosses her around a little bit um, as she's trying to make all these moves on John he's responding um, like she's trying to make romantic moves towards her and he's responding with with violence towards her um, he's really shocked by um, how forward he views her to be and if his 
understanding of the expectations in, ro in romantic relationships comes from Shakespeare. Um, and especially if we look to him looking at, um, at Othello um, when he first got to London, um, we want to pay attention to that idea of jealousy. Um, so we start to question ourselves, um, or we start to question just how noble John is truly acting in these moments um, when he is when he is hurting Lenina as he grabs at her wrist, and we see him call her a whore and an impudent strumpet. Um, think about the parallels that exist um, to. Othello and his his accusations of Desdemona in such a same in such a similar way. Um, so he scares Lenina um, in a way that. that we're going to have to see how that plays out for her moving forward. Um, so we shall see what comes next. That's chapters 12 and 13. We start to see the impact that John is having on the society that he's in, but also the impact that the society of the world state is having on John. So we'll look at that a little bit more next class.